My family is from the desert. Mexicali, Baja California. Puro Cachanilla. My mom and dad are desert people. They're from a place where sidewalks expand and crumple like accordions in the summer. Where my sisters and I would recharge our AA batteries by simply leaving them in a hot car while we visited with our cousins. Once, my sister accidentally left her Walkman in the car and it melted. <laughs> <laughs> Along with her new kids on the block cassette tape. Aww. So although it still worked, she had to keep rewinding it and replaying step by step <laughs> on the six hour car ride home. Cause it had melted in the same shape as the Walkman so she couldn't flip it over to the other side. <laughs> Nighttime heat meant hanging out outside with the family and neighbors, sharing chupacabra stories and looking for UFOs in the clear night sky. Because again, it's a desert, so there's nothing to do and weird shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> Mexicali is the land of raspados, hielitos, and aguas frescas, snow cones made of natural fruit juices, ice pops and icy fruit water made by moms and sold out of their freezers to thirsty neighbor kids, side hustles that revolve around the heat the way Angelinos side hustle around the entertainment industry. <laughs> the city's annual festival celebrating its cultural heritage is called <coughs> Las Fiestas del Sol, the Festival of the Sun. In Mexicali, the heat is in the air, in the people, in the culture, and in the ground. El Cerro Prieto, the dark hill, is a volcano about 18 miles southeast of the city of Mexicali. Its dark hue makes it stand out from the soft brown sea of desert that surrounds it. El Cerro Prieto power plant is the second largest geothermal energy plant in the world, and the energy produced by the steam that comes out of the volcanic ground provides electricity for the surrounding ejidos, or towns. We pass by it every time we visit my family. All around the volcano, steam turbines pump white clouds of smoke into the air, like giant cigarettes reminding scared little girls that the volcano may be dormant, but it is not extinct. As a child, I remember having nightmares of volcanic explosions that would wipe out my entire family. Grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, and multiple generations of extended family. My mom would casually tell me stories about her own childhood where she, for some of the other children, would find these small streams of boiling water coming up from cracks in the ground. And about this one town that had to be relocated completely because the ground began to open up. So yeah, it was pretty scary. <laughs> but then again, everything was really scary to me as a kid. Cockroaches, scary movies, the dark, bad weather. <laughs> but despite popular opinion, I was not a scaredy cat. I was just a very cautious child. <laughs> <laughs> and when it came to active volcanoes, I had so many questions. Why do people live here? <laughs> I didn't understand why so many people voluntarily set up entire communities in what was clearly the path of volcanic destruction. Had they not seen the movie Volcano? <laughs> or any episode of Land of the Lost? Volcanoes were popping off all the time. Why was I the only person concerned about this? Even the time my tío Nito, my dad's youngest brother, fell into the volcano, <laughs> no one really seemed that concerned. And it's fine, he just broke his leg. But I'm like, <laughs> what? But of course, secretly, my biggest concern was if this 
volcano wipes out my entire family, do I still get a quinceañera? <laughs> <laughs> when I was about 10 years old, uh, I was staying with my family in Mexicali in the week between Christmas and New Year's, and my cousins decided we should all go hiking up the volcano. And my first instinct was, are you crazy? We are already way too close for comfort, and you want to go to it? And you want to climb it? What if we make it angry? <laughs> because if early 90s cartoons were correct, volcanoes are like people. They're temperamental, and they are sassy. <laughs> and if you annoy them, they blow up. But no one else really seemed that concerned. Maybe because, like my mom, they too had gotten weird to, cr had gotten used to like crazy volcano shit just happening. <laughs> and like my mom, they too weren't scared of nothing. But eventually, I just decided to go. Not because I wasn't scared. I just figured, since my parents are going and my sisters are going, I decided it's better if we just die as a family. <laughs> than be the lone survivor of an angry volcano god. <laughs> there were about 12 of us on that expedition. As a caravan of cars slowly made its way down the single lane dirt road towards the mountain I'd always feared from a distance, it began to look bigger and bigger until we reached its edges. I was still fully on alert, on the lookout for the quickest way off this mountain. But as we began the hike, my fear slowly began to be not replaced by, but paired with a sense of wonder. The dark volcanic rocks splashed with green moss were really quite pretty. And every so often, I could see steam slowly floating out between the crevices. I was on a freaking volcano. As we went higher and higher, I could see the world beneath begin to look smaller and smaller. I've never been an outside kid, so the only mountain I'd ever been on before was the Matterhorn and Big Thunder Splash and Space. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I'd ever been up this high was while riding roller coasters at Six Flags. <laughs> but here, there were no belts, no harnesses to keep me from flying off it was just me versus gravity, slowly calculating each step forward. I'm not sure I even talked to anyone the whole way up. <laughs> my thoughts alternating between not falling, worrying about my family falling, observing the beauty of the world from up high, contemplating the meaning of life, life after death, ap appreciating nature, uh, what happened to the dinosaurs? Don't fall and try not to die from an asthma attack because as I mentioned before, I am not an outside kid and my bones were on fire. <laughs> 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 but my family, on the other hand, <laughs> was just wandering around freely, chatting it up, having a good time without a care in the world. Several existential crises later, we were almost at the very top. It was actually only about a 40 minute climb. As scared as I was in that moment, I was also extremely excited. I was about to peer into the center of the planet. All those National Geographic images of swirling magma flooded into my brain, and I was ready. <laughs> I took a few more terrifying steps, held my breath, and looked into the crater, and it was flat. <laughs> it almost looked like concrete. There was no spewing lake of lava. My skin wasn't burning from the steam. This was not the Krakatoa from the 21 Balloons, my favorite book at the time. <laughs> Even Mount St. Smurf, the cartoon volcano that threatened the Smurf village, was more threatening than this. <laughs> to be honest, I was disappointed, but I was also really relieved. I was not going to die today, <laughs> at least not from molten hot lava. We went down into the crater, and it was freaking cool. Inside the crater was a large flat area of light-colored dirt with hundreds of names and designs that people had made. 
by grouping together small dark rocks. It was like a communal work of art with pieces by a thousand artists who had carefully chosen the thoughts they wanted to leave behind in the dirt. As we hiked back up away from the crater, I looked back and I could see the Armenta, my mother's family name, among the other names. My family and I had collected all those little rocks together and we'd left our collective mark as a sign of the thing we'd achieved together. And the whole way back to the car, I was filled with a deep sense of pride in myself, in my family, and in my volcanic roots. <laughs> I've been back to a Cerro Prieto since that climb. Oh, that's not me, that's my sister. <laughs> But I thought it was a really cute picture. <laughs> and I wish I had one of me like this. But I don't. So just pretend that's me. <laughs> I've been back to El Cerro Prieto since that climb. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie, it still scares me. But also, I've already had my quinces, so it's fine. <laughs> On the hike up to the summit, uh, oh yeah, so one less thing to worry about. Um, on the hike, to the summit, the steam still escapes through rocks reminding us that the heat and power is still very present and that it has the potential to hurt and to damage. As I drive past, I still think of the monster that sleeps and the protector that provides. The dark hill is the lifeline of the city. It provides energy, employment, and educational opportunities. It trained my father, as well as many of my uncles, how to work in construction when they, like many of the other men in the surrounding towns, at one point or another worked for the energy plant. I understand now why they stay in the towns beneath the volcano. It's where family is. And like me, maybe they'd rather die together than survive alone. Sometimes, the rewards are worth the risks. My family is from the desert, from the valley of the volcano. My parents chose a different risk. They moved north, and I was born near the cool breezes of the Ventura Harbor. I was the first born into a world of blue horizons, but I'm also a child of my parents. I live on nopales and sushi, prickly pear and boba, my skin and my eyes miss the ocean whenever I am too far away for too long. But inside, my blood still pumps the molten lava of the desert because I climbed a fucking volcano. Yeah. <laughs> Gloria de Leon!